Hello, I'm Greg Reichand, Broadcast Mods, and welcome to episode 16 of season 3 of my Power PC series. In today's episode, we'll be unboxing this Mac right here, which I just got in the mail, and I want to show you guys it. Plus, I don't know if it came in one piece. But if you uh, notice right down here, uh, we are currently watching uh, Steam for Mac 84's 100, uh, I mean, 100,000 would be pretty impressive. Thousand subscriber uh, live stream where he's repairing some stuff. You guys should check it out. I'll put a link right up here and you can see the live stream after this video and enjoy that. But I also have it running here because I still want you guys to go and sub to him even though he has hit a thousand subs. He needs more views, so go sub to him and watch some of his videos. He needs them, really, needs it to uh, monetize and you know grow his channel. So I, I greatly appreciate that. But right now, let's actually open up this box. What is in this box, you may ask? This is a Bondi Blue um, Revision B iMac G3. It's supposed to be a 233 megahertz, and um, the box is a little wobbly, and sorry if it squeaks on um, the table. Can't do a whole lot about that. I've been trying to get it to not squeak. It still needs more work. I need to reinforce it or something. But anyway, getting back to the point, we're unboxing this iMac G3 right here, and I hope you guys enjoy today's video. It's going to be very awesome. Um, and, um, you know, let's do it and see if it made it in one piece. So let's go. All right, guys, so I've got the unboxing knife back, which I use in most of my unboxing videos, so let's see what happens. We'll cut it here. Cut towards me. Try not to stab myself. Still not cutting. package slip. Now this iMac apparently doesn't come with anything but the iMac itself, which is totally fine. I've got an old rainbow cable for it, which were on iMac G3s. I think the first ones actually came with beige wires like uh, the um, beige Max did. Um, this would probably be from a five flavors model or a slot load five flavors model. This actually came with a cube power supply I had once. I haven't actually gotten an iMac with one yet. But, wow, that's got some impressive packaging in it. It may have made it in one piece. Now this is the nicest looking uh, Bondi Blue and one of the latest um, production Bondi Blues with a Revision B. Well, they were all either Revision A or B um, to be Bondi Blue. But it's, um, it's one of the newest ones you could get. This is like the very end of the production line for Bondi Blue before the five flavors came out. Uh, we'll show you that in the video. But uh, let's get this packaging out of here. And I can already see the iMac. It looks, it looks like it's man-made, as we can see right here. It looks pretty good. It's nice and bondy blue. So, yeah, you put some foam packaging out. Oh, he did include the cable. I don't think this is an actual Apple cable, but it's a cable. So, yeah, we got that. I don't see any catastrophes yet. It's got good packaging out. So, um, let's lift it out here. Mm. It's not coming out. There we go. Here's the Bondi Blue Revision B iMac G3. Let me clean this up real quick. My dogs are in the next room. 
Probably not a good thing to have this just laying out for when they come back in. That's a lot of good packaging here. Woo! Okay. So I'll let you get this bubble wrap off of here and see if it really did make it one piece. These have a notorious um, habit of uh, case cracking internally and externally. So let's see what happened to it. I would say it made it one piece. It looks very nice. Let's see if this has the feet on it still. Yeah, it has the stand on it. What sold me on this, with it being the cheapest, nice condition one, is it came with the side door still attached to it. And it seems to be one piece. There's light scuffing on it. But other than light scuffing on the uh, glossiness, there's no discoloration, and the uh, rest of the plastic looks really good. I think we might have a winner here. Now, if you guys have noticed, I'm not filming in 4K today, because I intend on doing a power-up and seeing if this thing actually works. And um, since it's a CRT, I need to film it at a rate where it will sync up with the camera. And uh, 4K60, even though I can do it, my computer can't do it yet. So we're going to be filming in the 1080, 60. It should be plenty enough. And it looks great. So, you know, let's uh, hook it up and see what happens. Okay, guys. So let's look this system over before we plug it in. It is really in remarkably good condition. And the reason why I wanted a Bondi Blue, this is... My second tray load iMac G3. My first one, Michael Stanhope still has and unboxed in this video right up here. Um, it is a blueberry and uh, it came with the original boxes and material and stuff. But I've been wanting a Bondi Blue, especially a Revision 3, I mean a, a, a Revision B, which had all the uh, improvements on it, but still Bondi Blue. And Bondi Blue was the first and only models to have IRDA in the front. And, um, wow, this thing's in really good shape. The tray's even not inset like they tend to do. But this thing, it's got a few little scuffs on it. A few really light scratches on it. But it's in really amazing shape. And the door's still on it. These fall off and break all the time. There you go. And uh, if we look in here, this is the reason why, why I want a Bondi Blue. Steve from Mac84 managed to find me a card to stick in it. Now these systems came with um, what they call the mezzanine slot. And that's what the socket is called for it. It's, it's a, a mobile platform uh, expansion card thing that was uh, very popular in the late 90s. And uh, the revision A and B iMac G3s had a mezzanine slot. Apple did not intend for anyone to use this port right here. So they removed it in revision C. In fact, they said it would void your warranty if you used the slot. And uh, I do see some chunks of plastic laying around in here, which means, I don't know, I don't see anything really broken. Uh, yeah, and it might be a little broken, but nothing really noticeable. Let's, let's turn it really quick, and we'll go back to that. Ugh. Yeah, I do hear a little broken plastic here and there. Yeah, there's some busted plastic, but I don't see it. I just see the aftermath of it. 
Um, but this internal piece right here is known to shatter like glass. And uh, it does look like it did not make the ship. Let's see if this side's kind of noticeable damage. Yep. I don't actually see where it broke off at. I would say it's behind the piece of plastic because I think this is supposed to be clipped into there. It looks like when the clips went. It's still not a big deal. It still looks really good from the outside. We'll open it up and dump the glass, I mean plastic out of it sometime. I am going to be upgrading this system and modifying it. So it's not a massive problem. It's still good, good, good looking. And um, yeah, let me quickly look at the back. But anyway, getting back to the mezzanine slot, third party people figured out that since there was a mezzanine slot, you could put expansion cards in it. And Steve from Mac 84 found a mezzanine card that will go in this. It's an AV card. I bought it off of him before I even owned this system, before I even bought this system because they're extremely rare. And uh, what I really want is to find, they had an aftermarket voodoo card you could put right here. Um, but only revision A and B had the mezzanine slot. So C, my blueberry, can't do it. But Bondi Blue can. If we look in here, we have a production date of February 12th, 1999. It's one of the very last revision Bs. Um, and it came with uh, 233 G, G3, uh, 32 megs of RAM, uh, 4 gig hard drive, 24 times CD drive. It's kind of hard to read here. It's 6 megabytes of a VRAM, a modem, and 512K of cache. So, yeah. And then we've got the ports, um, microphone, audio out, two USB 1.1s, 10100 Ethernet, dial-up modem, uh, reset button, and uh, flash button for programming. And uh, this definitely will need to have the uh, parts dumped out of it. But anyway, if you see this, this is uh, a lot of people mistake this for just a handle to pop it open. This was actually meant because... People would have it open and then close the cables in like that and stuff, which you don't do. Uh, that's one of the reasons why this breaks off. Some people just purposely probably broke them off because it was annoying. But that's not the point of this hole. The point of this hole is to take a keyboard or whatever you're plugging in and feed it through the hole like this and then plug it into the port you're plugging it into. Right here, right here, do that, and then you close the door, and there you go. So I'm going to set this up really quick, plug it in, and actually I can probably do this while holding it. Let's uh, plug it in. Okay, it's plugged in, like that, spin it around, and I am going to press the power button and see what happens. Now, if I had the proper keyboard and mouse, the Apple USB keyboard that came with these had a power button right here. This is a pro keyboard from about two years later. It doesn't have that. So uh, let's uh, turn this light off and press the power button and see if it still works. That's impressive. This thing's going on 21 years old and it's powering right up. Is it going? It's showing the screen. Awesome. And the refresh rate's all messed up right now. We'll fix that in a second. I'm going to set this thing up on a tripod really quick. And uh, we'll uh, go through it. So 
Yeah, one second. Okay, we've got it booted up into Mac OS 9.2. I think this the seller said it was 9.2.1, so I would need it updated anyway to point two. But uh, let's try to get the refresh rate right on here. It's not going to go much lower than that. Let's see. See how that looks. Oh, that's that works enough. That's synced up enough. So right now we have it at 640 by 480, um, at a very close refresh rate to what this would natively be needing. Um, sorry for the little bit of blinking there, but you can't do a whole lot. Let's get this really close. Yeah. Um, I wonder if this ejects. Yeah. The optical drive just ejected, as we can see here. It worked fine. We can try the button. Yeah. Keyboard. Yeah. Awesome. So, okay, we got it by six, uh, 640 by 480. We can zoom it in a little bit more like that. And sorry for this light up here. I'll, I'll try to hold it like that. There. Okay. So let's go into about this computer. Is running 9.2.1. It's been upgraded to 64 megs of RAM. I'll be upgrading this to 512. And we've got Apple System Profiler here. Yep, 233 megahertz. Seems to work. Uh, sound works. Other than a little bit of internal case damage, which uh, isn't apparent from the outside, other than, you know, those apparent pieces just laying around everywhere, I think this is a very big win. This uh, system looks like it works totally fine, and I'm very happy and glad you guys could join in the unboxing of this. There will be a video about this very soon. Uh, this system's 21 years old almost. The uh, design itself has been out for 21 years. And uh, it's cool to see stuff like this still running quite well. Now, uh, before we wrap up the video, once again, don't forget to check out Steve. Go watch him. Um, give him some views so he can get his channel really going. And thank you for subscribing to him. And continue subscribing if you haven't yet. Uh, just hit the eye icon and go over to his channel and uh, check him out. He's got great videos. He's currently dry, uh, drawing a Happy Mac on the live stream. Okay. It looks like he's working on a Lombard right now. Interesting. All right, Steve. That's perfect timing right there. <laughs> but, yeah, go check him out. Go subscribe to him. Give him some views. Let's get his channel up and going super great. Uh, and thank you guys for supporting me and supporting him. Also, he has a Patreon, too, if you want to support him. I'll put a uh, link to his Patreon down with my Patreon down uh, in the description below. But right now, let's wrap up the video. I am very happy with the end result of this iMac G3. Um, a little bit of internal damage isn't a big deal. It's very common on these. I'll just dump the plastic out, try to reinforce whatever's still um, still just barely holding together, and fix it up. Um, and it shouldn't be too bad. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, um, don't forget, I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com. So if you have an Apple product you'd like to sell, just um, go to SellYourMac.com slash RockKMods and uh, sell them something it will help me out and it will help you out because you'll be making money don't forget i do now have a patreon if you'd like to support me um, there'll be a link at the end of the video and in the description below with steve's and also i am releasing these videos a, a day early on patreon now i did in the very last video and that was all because i was doing a shout out to steve but um yeah um this one's going to probably be on Patreon first. 
and all my future ones will be too. So, you know, if you want to support me, go over to Patreon, g give me a hand, and I'd greatly appreciate it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and this has been a Retcame Mods video.